let's get started. Uh, we've got a slim uh, crew here today. Uh, Diane had to step away for an all-day meeting. Uh, so, um, and jump right into um, our agenda. And it looks like, oh, actually I can take Diane. Um, Brian, Michael, Bruce, can you put your name in the, in the document here? Share out the. Okay, you want to put the document in the chat just so that I don't have to yeah. go and find there it. There you go. Yeah. Um, and Mike is not here to talk about this transition of uh, uh, the guide transition. Let me see if there's anything in the PR. Uh, Oh, yes, actually, so Diane merged it 14 days ago. It looks like they did get the last little bit squared away, uh, and so the guides uh, now are merged into the OKD.io So we can actually list that one as completed. As Um, okay, I had questions about the charter update and placement that I was going to ask Diane, but since she's not here, we skip that. Um, updates to the OKD.io banner. Uh, I did make the change to uh, get rid of the uh, recipes um, link, so now it is all... Uh, just what is OKD, installation, documentation, blog, and community. And um, why don't we actually, this seems like a good, a good place to actually move and put Brian's uh, stuff. I'm going to move our agenda around here because actually now would be a great time for uh, Brian to give us an update on the beta site. If there is any updates. Yeah, unmute myself, so that always helps. Yeah, there there is. Um probably easier if I do this. Yeah, go ahead and share your screen if you want. Hopefully you can now see that yes, screen. Yes, we can. Thank you. Probably ridiculously small. Uh, okay, so I've actually created the beta on the OKD.io and this now does contain the site. Um, if you look, the GitHub actions are there, and when you push, it actually runs the action. Um, and that action will go and do a spell check. Um, it'll actually check all links. So just a warning, whenever you do an update to the site, you're also responsible for fixing any broken links. Um, so it'll, it checks all the links in the site and will tell you there are any broken links. Um, and then it'll obviously publish. Now, the one issue I have is I don't have access to the settings. So if I go to mine, I have access to settings, which allows me to go into pages and configure to source GitHub pages from the GH pages branch. Um, so we need that setting made because at the minute, um, the GitHub pages site is inactive. Um, but I actually don't have access to the page. So if you look, we actually are creating the, there's a lot of branches in here. <laughs> we are actually creating the GitHub pages site. So this is the source of the beta site. So it's all there, it's all working. But obviously until we turn on GitHub pages for this project, we don't get to see it. So um, I don't know whether you have access, Jamie. I just we, looked and I do not. So let's add that actually as a to do. So we'll need to get whoever at Red Hat act, has access to this to go and turn that on. Um, just, and again, we can actually send them a screenshot of this page if you want. We just need the source to be GitHub pages branch and we want the root and nothing else. We can enforce HTTPS and that's it. So in the pages section on the settings, just those two settings, and that will turn on the beta site. 
and then the, it'll also give us the URL. So that's probably just going to be the OpenShift-CS GitHub.io, and then it'll be OKD.io would be the URL. Um, <clears throat> so that's actually getting the site there. So every time we push code to the beta branch, um, it doesn't touch the main branch or the master branch as it's defined here. It's just this beta branch. We'll actually kick off the GitHub action to actually do that. So if I go back to to my site that I sort of tried all this out, um, we do have some decisions to make. So this is what it looks like at the minute. Now, I think we need to change this. I want to make this much, much simpler. This also uses Bootstrap framework, which causes some issues. So if I shrink this, um, you notice that it doesn't necessarily work very well. The menu just doesn't work because the Bootstrap is interfering with the underlying MKDocs framework. So there are some issues in terms of just getting that um, reactive sort of content working. Um, so we do need to work out what we want on the simple side. And then also, are these colors okay? I mean, I just picked from the home, I just picked these two colors. But I don't know whether this is what we want the other, the rest of the site to look at. Um, do we want it to be different colors? I'm using red as the active highlight. Um, so there, there are a lot of style issues. I've actually picked up the, um, the, the font and the um, styling from what we have on the current site. So I've actually adopted the same fonts as the old site uses. But again, there's a lot of sort of style issues that we need to discuss. And then obviously we just need to make sure we move the content across because um, obviously what you've just done, um, I mean, I didn't put the recipes there anyway, but um, the guides, which I sort of suggested belong here under the getting started instead of a separate thing. There's all sorts of things we need to. So I don't know whether we want to do it in these meetings, have a working group, a work session where we just go and get it agreed and sorted or whether you're just happy for me to come up with something, make it up as I go along and present it and say, do we like this? Take go. So, uh, I, well, let's see. I'm, I'm a little bit pressed for time myself for other meetings, for like out, other meetings in addition to what I have. Bruce, what's your uh, time availability uh, okay. these days? You're okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay. Um, the only thing that I know of that was important to Diane is to maintain at the bottom or to include at the bottom of whatever we did, the um, end user community part and the commons part is to have that featured. I don't know if it's necessary to be on the same front, to be on this, the front page the same as it is now, but it was important for Diane to have that, to list those partners uh, and list the community commons as something that people can participate in. Yeah. So, well, yeah, it seems that Diane, um, like this seems to be from Diane's standpoint, a dual purpose site with one of the significant purposes being marketing. <laughs> in other words, yeah. a like some new potential user sort of sitting around, uh, you know, fat, dumb, and happy. I can say that because I'm fat. Um, stumbles across the site and they should be incentivized to want to install OKD, you know, after buying a, a you know, bunch of hardware and uh, so, and then promoting it to the world. Um, right. Yeah, and I can, I can see I, that, right? Yeah. I, I'm, not, um, I'm not the person to advise on that side at all. Right. Uh, so um, my, my interest is more on what's useful and, uh, you know, because I think like from the standpoint of a technical person, they will very quickly get annoyed by the marketing bump. And right. if there's not useful stuff, then they're not going to go back. Does it make sense to have it be a sub menu under uh, community? Maybe, maybe the last item under community or something like that? Yeah, well, I, I don't have a problem with the, with the, the homepage being marketing bump as long as it's sort of clear what you click on to get the the good stuff <laughs> right 
So I don't know. I guess uh, we'll have to save that for Diane to see what she's partial to in terms of format and stuff. Right. But I would say the rest of it, Brian, if, what, are, what are you most comfortable since you're sort of leading this effort? Do you want to do it in these meetings? Do you want to wrangle people for a separate meeting? I'll I hand mean, that to you and you can run with it. Yeah, I mean, the, I, I think the big thing is just to get a consensus on dialing color, the colors to use and do we want it? I mean, there is an option where we could have a dark mode and a light mode with a toggle switch. It'll pick up your browser's preferences if we want that. So th these are all things that we can turn on. Um, and it's a configuration thing. So it's not anything to do with writing the content because you write content in Markdown and whatever we decide is a styling will get applied to that. So yeah. the, the, it's not as if the decisions we make, but I'm aware this, this is our, our community presence on the web. So I'm a fairly new member. I, I'm happy to go and and sort of start throwing things up and letting people shoot me down and saying that's terrible and go go do better or yeah I like that maybe we we, we need a different color here or but if people want to have a say I'm equally as happy to have a say and however people want to do it I don't... yeah from my standpoint you're doing stuff that makes you a valued member. Yeah, there you go. Well, do, does it make sense? So, I mean, I don't know who else is going to be coming to these meetings right now. Um, folks are like really busy. And in the past, we've had like um, basically it's it's plus Mike and then plus uh, Mohammed Reza and then Michael, and that's basically been it. Uh, and then uh, uh, Driti. Um, so really, it's been this core group of people. Does it make sense, Bruce and Brian, for you folks to go off and and work and then just bring something back uh, to the larger group? Um, because there's going to be stuff coming up in these meetings that we're going to have to address in terms of some of the other documentation, installation documentation, and things like that. So maybe in terms of the design stuff, if you folks go off and, and figure out what works best and bring it back to the group, and chances are unless there's are you something in north major. american time zone brian i'm uk based, so UK based. I'm, okay so that so that gets a little bit trickier to find a common time yeah so what time zone are you in are you east central uh, or i'm west? pacific, you're, pacific you're, so uh, that's even worse so we're eight hours <laughs> I'm on the west coast just like uh, diane so we're eight hours apart okay so yeah um i mean what i can do is i can do things and and put a comment in the slack channel or wherever and say I've made a change go say yay or nay and we can take it from there and I can we can do it incrementally and ask people to the comment I mean the problem yeah. is people tend not to comment and then when it goes live there'll be a, an outcry of right. who did this I don't like right. this <laughs> but, but I think I think that the your the uh, optional dark mode light mode is good yeah if for that's accessibility the, reasons for accessibility yeah. reasons Okay, yeah. I Bruce, actually have one oh, let me other just thing. Oh, let me just check one thing with Bruce. Bruce, do you, you don't seem to spend a lot of time in the channel, though. Um, uh, would it, well, would it, basically, I, I turned off the notifications because I was getting one every second. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, most of them useless. Does it make more sense, Brian, for you to use the Google group and post something Google in the group, Google it, group when you make a change? Yeah, I can use the Google group if, if people want me to do that. That might be better because then it's easier for people to, to retrieve if they can't look right at that moment. Okay. They can, there's at least a trail that's easier yeah. to follow of this. And yeah. my, my email is actually, like, my work email is public. Okay. 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 Yeah, I can do that. Uh, so, so the one question I have, and maybe Michael can tell me, I'm assuming I've got to remove this because if we're going to be GitHub pages driven, we're no longer going to be powered by Red Hat on OpenShift Online. So I'm guessing that would have to be removed. And are there any legal things that we need to put in, like license or copyright or any of this sort of stuff that we need to be aware of? Because and I'm if aware Michael that... doesn't know, who do we ask to know about that? Yeah. yeah, there is no copyright or anything on here, and most communities have a some licensing or copyright stuff in here. Um, and I say, I, I guess I've got to remove that. 
Yeah, we'll have to figure that part out. Um, okay. And so do those, let's see, we've got the Twitter. Where does the Twitter go, by the way? Does that go to the OpenShift Twitter? So that's the same it's as like exactly a, what's up. That's uh, that's the same as what's uh, exactly on OKD.io now. It's the same. Yeah, but what so does it go on, to? Does it, yeah, it goes to OpenShift. But, uh, okay. Oh, and it goes to OpenShift Origin, the GitHub. Yeah, I, Origin. I just noticed that there's actually a link on the front page that goes to Origin instead of OKD in the community section. I just noticed that a little bit of go, um, which one was it? And again, we go to the OpenShift Facebook page. So to say that we are a community driven project, we seem to be sending everyone to OpenShift. Oh, you know what? It's the fork the repository link that actually goes to the old origin. Uh, okay, so we need to change those anyway. Is, yeah, that needs to go to, to the OKD. Yeah, because this talks about like 4.6 and above and. Okay. Uh, oh, interesting. As of July 2020, the purpose and maintenance strategy of the repo varies by branch. So apparently origin is used as sort of a dumping, well, I don't want to say dumping ground, but a jumping off point. So yeah, we definitely want to instead drop people into uh, the OKD one. Yep. All right. And so, yeah, we'll put that on the list just to find out about uh, legal stuff. If Michael doesn't know, um, like, what do we need to have in terms of any type of, uh, you know, insignia for copyright or anything like that? I do not. You do not. I can look at what OpenShift has. Well, I'm sure Diane actually knows someone that can give us an answer. So let's put it in, that in the to do. Much safer. Yeah. And 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 I I guess just to go looking down further the um the agenda, when we actually do the switch, we can probably handle the inclusive language update at the same time. That's probably a good time to do that. Right. Okay, so I have a next item in terms of, of this, which is priority. What do, we, what do we think is priority to move to the beta so that we can move the beta over sooner than later? Like, because there's a lot of sort of, um, uh, sort of crufty type stuff. And what would, what would be helpful to move, to move into the beta so that we get a good sense of, of navigation, appearance, and, I mean, the, and functionality. The way I was planning is to get the beta to the state that we'd want the production to be at, and then simply just do a pull request to push the beta into the main branch. No, but Which, I mean, in terms of moving content over, because we're not just going to, I mean, are we just going to take everything that's on the current site and dump it into the beta or? Potentially, yes, with a sort of a, because I, I mean, we, we sort of have got, already gone through the site and said, well, we need to get rid of this stuff. So we looked at the recipes and said, well, that, that, that's going, that's old. So I, there isn't a lot on the site, to be honest. Yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, well, we'll I'll move the blogs across. I'll move the guides across, I think, because obviously they, they went on since I did the fork. And I know I rebased the fork on, on today, but I actually did the fork. A month ago, so um, I haven't pulled any content that's recently been changed. So I'll try and pull all the content that's currently on the site into the beta. Um, as you see, I've already sort of suggested new locations. So I'll put the, the guides within the getting started section. Um, and I'll, I'll tr my idea is to get the, the styling, the colors, and the content to be the state that we want it in production. And then when we all agree that it's it's at that point, I think we switch. 
right. So should we put, so are we in agreement then that nothing new should be put in the current repository? I made that one change to the header, but nothing else? Are we good? Or is there any anything else that is an immediate thing to change until we're ready to go live with the beta? Yeah, so I, I actually rebased the beta after your changes. So if you look, okay. I rebased the beta changes. Um, there is no, There are no changes from where I did the rebase. So we should be able to merge the beta onto the master without any conflicts today. So ideally, it would be good if we could not do huge amounts of change. Right. Because um, right. otherwise... Why don't I don't know that we need to change anything else right now. My sense is that the people who wrote the guides aren't going to be coming back in the near future to update those. So, Well, I'm hoping that it's going to be a matter of maybe a couple of weeks, maybe at next docs we can ask for approvals time, type time frame. I'm not expecting this to be going on for months. Yeah. Now, I think that we could conceivably have content changes um, in, in that... Uh, uh, I don't think we've really looked at it to see, okay, like all the information that people want to access frequently, is it easily accessible? Like I, I, I will occasionally find new stuff popping up when I do a Google search that I didn't even know existed, which is really, and, and some of it is stuff that Vadim did and put in Markdown that's, you know, somewhere in the, you know, like, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, GitHub slash install slash, you know, if you go down a bit, then you find a fantastically useful yes. document. Uh, There's actually a but, build document about that's buried, that's about like how to build OKD. Yeah, uh, yeah. so like some, buried, yeah. so, uh, and I noticed like, like whenever I'm on a different machine, I need to find the, uh, the status page with the updates, I have to poke around. Right. And so, so some things like that would be, uh, I think, are generally useful enough that it'd be nice, like, if you go install, then there's a link right to it with a, a meaningful name well, so well, that you know what you're clicking on. I mean, the, the, hope, the hope is that once this goes live, making updates to the doc site is trivial. Right. And anyone should be able to do a pull request without needing to understand middleman and how to do a full page web development. It's, it's just going to be a simple markdown file. So my hope is that once this goes live, the changes to the doc site become much more frequent and we're much more responsive about saying we should really add this to the docs or even to the point of there's a release that's, that's got an issue, a known issue, let's put that up as, as, as a known issue for release 4.8.x. And, and, and we can actually start making the site the go-to place to find stuff or and find the latest information rather than, I mean, looking back at the history, OKD.io hasn't really changed a huge amount um, for quite some time. We're not using it as the as a place where we post up-to-date information. Right. And it would be really useful to have such a place. Uh, I think, but I mean, I think, but again, I wouldn't throw in too many factors at once. You know, as, sure. like I think your plan is a good one, which is uh, get what we have now rebased, uh, and then we can look at uh, making changes to make it more serviceable. One thing I do have, do. yeah, and one thing I do have, Bruce, to your point about buried documents is, um, uh, and I can actually, I'll modify the uh, the agenda to, to reflect this is further down, we had an ongoing item uh, that was the name and scope of install.md and readme.md, because those are the ones where you want to get to the install.md because that has the link to releases and there's all that navigation stuff. I want to have that conversation with Vadim since Vadim created those two pages. Where are those pages? <laughs> so if you go to okd.io, or, or sorry, if you go to the OKD code repository, so GitHub, um, 
so, okay, so it's it's not the documentation GitHub repository. Right. It's, it's and this has been sort of an ongoing confusing thing. Is if you go to yeah, it's slash open shift slash okd is the read. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um. And actually, there's some stuff that needs to get pulled out of there. Like those guides need to get deleted because those are the old ones. Um, there, uh, there's the troubleshooting stuff, um, which talks about log bundles. Um, there's the contributing page, which talks about actually building OKD. Like, I feel like contributing needs to actually get changed to like building OKD because contributing in terms of the group can mean a lot of different things, right? And, um, you know, known issues, he actually has been updating known issues with known issues for builds and stuff like that. Um, so, so, so my take yeah. is that this repo, all of this content should go to okd.io. It, it feels that way because there's really nothing here that's like scripts or anything like that. I think the the guides might have a couple of scripts or something like that, but no, there's no, it's all content. And so my sense is that, yeah, I mean, it should go, I can, yeah, even navigating through here, I'm not seeing anything that isn't just some flat pages. Um, yeah, so where, I, I, where is I think so. Where, where is the install.md, or is, is that in the... So it's, if you go to, um, is it install.md, or what is it? Let's see, hold on. Let me find it. It's, you go to the main page. Oh, no, it's releases. So if you want to click on releases, so if you go to the getting started part, and then there's releases, that goes to the long release page. Which, where is that in, is he updating that in real time, the releases page? Uh, see. So where well, I think, is... uh, the, the releases page is auto-generated, right? Oh, that's right. Kind of, that's yeah, that's yeah. generated by the CI system. Yeah, okay, so the, the releases page is the is the GitHub releases tags. So it's it's the, yeah, it's the right. project releases rather than a, a content page. Right. So for stuff like that, does it make sense to keep it? That's got to stay there because the, yeah. that, that is effectively a CI. Right. It's, it's a, a, CI it's a Git things. feature, not a documentation feature. Right. Um, let's see, the Nightly's page. Um, but, but all, yeah, this stuff in the, all this stuff in the README... It's mixed. <laughs> yeah, it's like all over the place. Yeah, a lot of... I, I think we need to refactor this, ideally, and put it within okd.io. So it's mm -hmm. it, it, it's organized and it's it's easy yeah. to follow. Um, same with things like the FAQ. Yeah. Um, I think that should be a feature of okd.io. Um, and then, obviously, the... The log information, um, and then the contributing, as you say, it is a good source of information that should be there. This should be part of the, our documentation. Yeah. yeah. So should we have a, just sort of throwing this out, should contributing be its own link up at the top, or should it be under community? Like where ultimately would we want contributing to be? Because it is different than installing, right? I mean, at the minute I sort of put it sort of into community. Um, and then it's a, it, it's a sub menu in community. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? Does that work for folks? Makes sense to me, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else on this topic? Covered a lot. Um, oh, delineation of resources for workgroup and uh, OKD users. 
Um, Diane was going to look into the working group guidelines and conflict resolution, post something. Uh, she can't respond to that. Um, Diane did want us to provide text for what to put in the Google description and to, for what to ultimately put in the chat channel so that they don't like cross-reference each other. Because actually the chat, I think, says to go to the Google group for support or something. It's, it's I mean, kind of I, mixed. I mean, I think eventually, if we can get the community page on okd.io, then that would be a good place to send everybody to, because that will then, in a more verbose way, be able to say, are you an end user? Or do you want right. to contribute? And these are the differences. And right. this is where you go to do that function. That's where you go to that function. But until we get that page stable, I mean, the current community page. Well, right now, the link goes to the discussion, directly to the discussion. The discussion. So, so I, I would say that's probably the best place to send everybody to until okay. we can. By the way, I did notice that Vadim is now actually closing down issues that are not true, issue, val, you know, uh, verified as issues and directing yeah. them to the discussion, which is, is great. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I would support sending everybody to the discussions page. Um, uh, all right, that covers all of that. Um, so, Brian, in terms of inclusive language uh, update, did, did, is there anything on that ticket from those three folks that were assigned to it yet? I haven't been notified of any changes. Let's see if there's nothing. Nope, those folks are still assigned to it 28 days ago. Uh, response. So I would say in, um, how long do you want to wait, Brian, before we ping them again, those redheads? Well, as, as I said, I mean, if we're going to move across to the new site, I can mm -hmm. fix everything as part of that. And then as we transition from um, the current scheme to the um, GitHub Actions, they're going to have to turn off whatever automation they have. And at that point, we can just rename the master to main, which is the okay. primary action sure. on, on that. So I think when we do that transition, we close this ticket down. Okay. All right, that's easy enough. Uh, okay, and now we're up to Michael's uh, first draft of the docs on uh, submitting uh, uh, an issue on the docs. Michael, do you want to Walk us through it a little yeah. bit and show us what you got. Let me share. So I, start, I just started it in uh, Google Docs. But unfortunately, it's a Red Hat only Google Doc, unless I explicitly invite you all in. Right. I can find it. You see it? Yep. It's a uh, decidedly simple little document because I assume people know what to do know how to do these things. I just wanted to start by mentioning that the OK docs are built off the OpenShift docs. So any actions they want to take go against that repo and not the OKD repo. And folks need to file a PR directly against the documentation. And I got a link that goes over to here and you can just is that the wrong page. What's that new button there? What is that? Wait, we look into that. Or you can file an issue that should go right to an issue template. Sorry, this is our template. Right. You create issues. Uh, and we discussed this, I think, last meeting, what types of changes we wanted to see listed expressly, errors, typos, missing information, product names, right. the operating system, blah, blah, blah. And if you do file a JIRA issue here, the information to really hone what the problem is, what your concern is, and and how to tag it so that it gets our attention directly. So tag me, sign it to me and Diane, and if you have permissions to label, do the kind documentation label, and that will get our immediate attention. Excellent. That's great work. Man. Again, I'm assuming if people want to create a PR, I'm assuming they know how to do that, and they know how to fork the repo. Sure. 
it might be helpful add. to yeah if, if we maybe just one link to there's got to be a document out there that's like some basic you know how to do pull requests how to whatever you know so yeah i'm sure we have something in our, our training docs that i can grab and throw in here let's talk so about I'm, that even a link to some external resource yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing this is eventually going to end up on OKD.io. Yeah. Yep. All right. That's pretty much it. Very cool. Uh, any other feedback for Michael? No? No, just thank you. I, I think it's needed. That documentation is, is, is what we need. Great. Excellent. All right, uh, next item up is uh, create a build doc outline for Vadim. Brian and I have not uh, had any communication about that. We'll do that uh, in this coming week. I've been just really overwhelmed with other stuff, but I'm, I'm being able a little more time to break away from that. And then so Brian and I are going to create sort of a, a set of questions and things that will form the outline that we want Vadim to fill in the blanks on or or to point us to filling in the blanks on it. Well, I, I think we should actually combine that with the name and scope of install and README. Yeah. Because effectively that's a good point. A, some of that is some of that information already and some of it's filling in the blanks from there. So I think I think these two things go together very well. Yeah, I will do that in the uh, agenda in fact. Uh, go and that actually brings us do we have any new business is there anything else that's popped up that folks want to talk about in terms of docs anything else you've noticed that needs to be addressed or you'd like to see addressed or anything else that we should know about i i guess is just make sure um that the coc stuff is recorded um i'm hoping to apply but i'm out i've got social plans on friday evening and i may have to leave that crc thing early if it goes on for the full two hours um because i'm guessing again we want to write that up and get that into okd.io right so the outcome of that and again if somebody wants to do that if not i'll I'll, I'll do that after the effect, but if somebody wanted to document and write that up during the event and, um, sure. but I just think we need to make sure that we, we do have an action to convert that video session into useful documentation going forward. And then as we do the automation post that event, again, that's then fully documented and yeah. Yeah, and I think it would be nice if we, created a page that is a listing of all of these external events that we've had, as opposed to hoping that someone sees it in the all of the, the listing of blog posts. It'd be nice to have something that's, you know, like, um, I don't know what we would call it, but something that has links to the videos for all of these things we've been doing, you know, for the past year and a half or whatever. I mean, ideally, we want to we want a YouTube group or whatever, wherever we actually put them, and actually have a playlist so we can point people at a playlist. So we do have uh, an OKD playlist on the OpenShift. Um, uh, Diane gave me access, so I actually have access to that. So all of the OKD meetings are under that OKD playlist. So we can put our recordings under that. Um, It'd be nicer yeah. if we had another one specifically for somebody who doesn't want to wade through the weekly. Uh, good point. I, why don't I change that then to OKD workgroup meetings and then just OKD like general stuff, right? Just OKD, OKD workgroup meetings and OKD. Yeah, because that means we can then have like a resources page or a resources link, and sure. then we can point at that group, that, that YouTube playlist. Sure. And then they can go and self-discover all of the events that yeah. we've actually recorded. Perfect. I like it. All right. I will add that as an item for myself to do. Business change playlist name. Okay. Work group. I think it already is okay. Work group. Uh, and then create 
new playlist named OKD. All right. Uh, anything else? Anything else that uh, we need to cover? We've got uh, 15 minutes left. If there's nothing else, then we can uh, break early. All right, sounds like we're good. Um, let me know if you can't make the next meeting, since we're running a little bit thin, I don't, I, I don't wanna get less than like three people at a meeting, you know what I mean? So if folks can't make it, let me know ahead of time because then maybe we can reschedule or skip or something like that. Um, just so we don't have everyone sh or, or two or three people sitting here waiting, you know, if, it, if it, we don't have a quorum, basically, it should be like, I guess, four people. This is probably the smallest we would want it. Yeah, I'm okay for the next stocks one. I've got uh, a big academic kickoff uh, meeting next week. Uh, so I'm going to have to see, I don't know if I can come to the regular working group meeting, but depends on if I can bug out of the other one. There you go. Oh, and Brian, we are going to be recording the CRC, and I'm I'm hoping it only takes a, an hour. I almost feel like there's really, I don't know that you could take two hours with it, because it is pretty basic, but Diane did carve out the time in case it does go. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if, if it's an hour, I can stay, but I am going to have to sort of, after an hour, drop out. So, um, All right. yeah, I, I'm, I'm quite looking forward to that one. Um, yeah. I think the interesting thing is, how do we actually, I've not really seen how we actually do work outside of the meetings. What is the mechanism of actually collaborating outside the meetings? Because we actually want to create an automation sort of project as a result of this one. So I'm quite interested to see how that pans out, how much interest, and also how, how we're actually going to organize it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll probably be, I don't know. We'll see. It'll be interesting. So, but I'm definitely doing interested in helping with the automation. I know a couple of folks are. I know you are. So let's, um, yeah, we'll probably tackle that probably at the main meeting, the next main meeting. So probably next week's main. Probably talk about that with Vadim and see what he has. All right. Well, thank you everyone for showing up. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording here. All right, folks, I'll talk to you next time.